Howdy folks, it's Monday Madness, oh yes, and I've got announcements, I've got a plasma cutter coming in, some 3D machines, some CNC machines, whatever. I'm also building a CNC machine off camera right now that we're assembling for the February the 15th release. But in the meantime, I also did the uh, printables, the peg wall system. It's the 3D printed peg wall system, pegboard system. It's a honeycomb system. Anyways, we finished it and I got some advice on it. And I also have a, a 3D printer that had problems and we had to troubleshoot. So I want to go over that with anyone that might have that machine and explain what happened and why you know other people with the same machine probably the same problem or will have that problem at some point so let's start with the uh, peg wall yeah uh, boom so there it is the <laughs> this is a honeycomb peg wall system and uh yeah it was made from pet g which i have I, there's some PETG running right here right now, or was. Uh, the different components, there's like 25 different things that he's got on there uh, to, at printables that you can make for the uh, different you know types of tools and things you can hold. I've got my 3D printer tools specifically at this end. The calipers, you know. I also have something that I, I don't see around, but I always keep a little brass wire brush. And you just sort of hit the nozzle with it sometimes, especially with PETG. We'll get into PETG at some point in the future, I think, but it sticks to brass and your nozzle is brass and, you know, yeah, you know. Anyway, it's got these little bins right here and they have like the little different nozzles and things like that in them. Speaking of nozzles, I got some really cool nozzles from King Room, which we're going to hopefully, maybe we'll check them out Thursday. They're stainless steel. I don't know. We'll have to find out. And also, I've got some little parts back in here and then I've got a little bit of my 3D stuff on display on little shelves that you can have with this system. Also, I've got uh, another wrench holder up there that's empty right now because I'm still uh, configuring. The beauty of this thing is like any pegboard, you can take this stuff down, plug it in somewhere else and move stuff around. And I've got all kinds of different little hooks and accessories for it. So yeah, it's kind of a cool looking set of system for a 3D printer. So if you're into 3D printing, or maybe you have a laser or CNC machine, uh, you'll need a 3D printer. But this stuff here, somebody mentioned it and I wish I could remember the guy's name, but he was saying that he used uh, PLA Plus for his project. And I was thinking, you know, that's probably a better way to go. I think I would stay away from the PET-G unless you're really, uh, you know, unless you can do it or unless you've had experience with PET-G. PET-G can get kind of, uh, yeah, it can be a problem. Now, I want to show you the problem we did have this past week that I solved, but it was it was all about troubleshooting a 3D printer is the tarantula down here at the other end that's actually it's running a job off right now even but uh, we get down to the tarantula and let's I'll show you the uh, <laughs> the resolve <laughs> oh, bad yeah let's go look at that if you told me a week ago this thing would be sitting here putting parts out right now I almost wouldn't have believed it because it was acting up so badly and uh, what started to happen was halfway through a print it would just the it would just start putting plastic out just all over the place, almost random, just everywhere. And as it went, as I started to get into it, it was like, we're gonna have to troubleshoot and fix this. And of course, the very first thing you think about is there's like three uh, conditions here. There's software, of course. There's also the electronics of the machine. And then you've got the hardware or the belt drives and the motors and steppers and all the rest of it. So out of those three categories, it's like, well, we gotta at least try to, you know, pin it down to which one it is. And being a do-it-yourselfer, because this past week I overhauled two uh, those iRobot uh, Roombas. I also repaired a, uh, a closed washing machine, put a new clutch in it. And I always have a lot of fun around here. And uh, also starting to work on a an old another old bench that the the wife dragged home the other day. So <laughs> it's just. There's always do it yourself or you, you know, your world is busy sometimes. And this situation here was one of those ones that you dread because it's like, it's a 3D printer. Ooh. So you got to think about the three systems. And obviously I checked all the mechanical over first, the belts, the stepper motors, all that. And it's like, okay, everything is good. Everything's set. Everything's tight. Uh, there is nothing showing that looks wrong or something. Uh, I checked the wheels 
all the guide wheels to make sure you know that everything is up to snuff. That was very, probably the very first thing I did. And I ran another print off. And of course, about halfway through the print, all of a sudden the top just starts, you know, the nozzle's just dancing all over the place and just throwing stuff down. And uh, so it was like, okay, we're down to two things here. We're down to software or electronic hardware, like something has burned up. Now, the electronics, electronics can be really good and bad. If it's kind of like a light bulb, you know, once the light bulb burns out, it's over, you know. But what was happening here is it would start the print really well and it would get about halfway through the print and all of a sudden just start getting crazy. And the more I looked at that, I realized, well, it's not software because software would, uh, you know, again, like the light bulb thing, the software would like right from the get go probably get crazy or, you know, there would be other issues that would show up with software. So the, uh, I think it's Marlin 2.0, I believe is in here. It would, it would demonstrate problems right off the bat and it wouldn't be a specific you know, or it would be a very specific you know height and so I sort of made a note of the z-axis and you know where things were going crazy and as I continued to progressively run tests the machine was failing faster and faster which was sort of an indication okay what's happening here heat build up and we got to look at those electronics but we're not blowing up the electronics, but we are definitely something with heat and electronics. And there's a cooling fan underneath this thing for the electronic, for the motherboard and for well, actually the power supply too. And that fan is under the very bottom on a black box at the back here on the tarantula. And it's a cheap little fan. They shouldn't have done that. Yeah, 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 we know all that story. Anyways, they, they put a cheap little fan in there, small duct and stuff. When you put the tarantula down flat on something like this and all four feet are flat down on it, there's almost no air gap for the fan to get any fresh air to come in to help cool the electronic side of this machine. So I, I put this underneath it here, which is the leftover from our Craftsman table saw the other week. <laughs> this is the, what was it, the Alpha or the, the, the 1.0? <laughs> and propped up the front a little bit. Check back so I've got a good air gap to where that little cooling fan is. Then I ran off things. Now, right before I got into all that, this was, uh, yeah, I'll just show you this. This is a Benchy, you know. This is what it was doing just less than a week ago, just days ago. This was a, uh, and this was uh, another Benchy test. You know, again, trying to get, you can just see it just, it started to, you know, create the model. Everything was starting to go good. And then all of a sudden, ah, you know, all over the place. So, uh, I can confidently tell you right now, with this plate and that cooling fan, this machine can make Benchy just fine now. <laughs> no more problems. And it's been, I've run it through different uh, models since the, uh, I put this in, and it's doing fine now. And the only other thing I was looking at, I'll probably come back to it, is I probably need to put a better cooling fan system in that box to help keep those electronics and keep the power supply cool. I think tarantula, uh, sort of stumbled on that one, or, or actually uh, TiVo Up, which is the name of actually two companies that came together to produce uh, 3D printers. But the overall thing in my feeling still is, it's still a good machine, but you have to be aware of certain things that even these companies sometimes, they kind of, you know, fall down a little bit. They probably should have they either put bigger feet on these things to get it up off the a board like this so it can breathe uh, they should have put a better fan in there. Also, the other fan I don't like is this one here at the front. That's a really cheap uh, fan with like really bad bearings and everything in it. It's not a good fan, and I wish you know they hadn't done that. But again, it's like it's livable, so you know we're we're, we're doing okay with it. Uh, the Tarantula Pro has been a good machine for running like TPU and for running you know, PLA and PLA Plus. I haven't had any issues. Uh, Pet G. Not so good, but then Pet G, like I said, it's it's another situation. When you get the Pet G, which uh, we've run into this past week, uh, we've had problems in the past with Pet G, and we still have problems. And it's it's mostly about, about the hot end, which is the the hot part down to the nozzle here in these extruders. And the ideally uh, the best situation or solution would make sure you have a hot end in there. There's probably an all-metal hot end. A lot of these machines have a nylon tube in there. 
yeah, you're heating that up and you're running plastic and pushing it through a nylon tube. Does that make sense? No, no. But I guess it's a cheaper way to do something. I'm really not even sure why they do the nylon tube thing because nylon with the heat, yeah, kind of breaks down too. It gets kind of goofy. So anyways, and then of course, like I mentioned earlier, the PETG sticks to brass nozzles. So that's not a good idea. <laughs> Uh, let's go over to the workbench and talk about some other stuff. So in the in the title today will probably be something about alert to owners of the Tarantula Pro because troubleshooting wise, I would think anybody with that machine might be experiencing similar problems and you know, odd prints or something strange happening with their prints and that could be where the problem is coming from. And uh, running this little mini print farm, that showed up, that headache showed up pretty quick so it was like oh we better you know get this fixed and then you know share <laughs> yeah also uh, wood prices going up from what I hear so yeah if you need some 2 by 4s for a project you better run down to Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever and get them right away because it doesn't look good the market looks like it's trending back up again where wood's going to get kind of pricey uh, I'm not sure what that has to do with the price of gasoline or chickens right now but uh, yeah it's not looking too good not sure what's happening. The uh, stainless steel nozzles are interesting. I've yet to be able to test them, so uh, we're going to be testing them. I guess I'll be testing them this week for you all. And by Thursday, hopefully, we'll have some kind of report set up and figured out for you guys. Because if, you, if you're into 3D printing or you're going to get one or you've got one and you're thinking about various upgrades, the uh, stainless steel nozzles are uh, going to be offered for, I think they, they might even be on the site already. They're, they're not expensive from what they tell me but uh, they might clear up a lot of problems because getting back to PETG and uh, PLA, PLA plus and what, the stuff likes to stick to brass and we use brass nozzles. So yeah, that's, you know, I'm not quite sure where all the industry is coming from or why they did what they did, but the stainless steel nozzles sure sounds interesting. I also have those other new nozzles uh, here, but I haven't had a chance to look at them or really do anything with them just yet. I'll just show you a picture of what they look like, but uh, yeah, they have they break up the uh, PLA or well whatever filament you have into like three areas where it all gets more uniformly heated and then goes through to the nozzle. And I guess maybe that will help us pick up speed or something. I'm really not sure what gain you're gonna have, but theoretically it should be more uniform heating and uh, maybe better extraction when you go to change your uh, filament or something. I'm really not sure what I'm looking at at that point on that one. But we'll be giving them a test too and see how they do. You know, it might be really cool. That's some fun stuff too. That I, I wanted to tell you guys some of the funny stuff that goes on here, but. Um, it's 60 degrees today here, and it's, I'm in southern Texas. That's a cold day, but it's pretty much normal around here at this time of year. Up north right now, today, they are telling me that it's up to uh, something like minus 50 below, and got snow, wind, ice, all of it up there. Anyways, companies wanted to supply me a snowblower to demonstrate for you guys. Yeah, snowblower. <laughs> and, uh, so I asked them, you know, do you realize I'm in southern Texas? Uh, they, they, they were like, they don't get it, you know, and I'm like, uh, we don't have snow. Well, when you have snow, you could demonstrate the blower. We don't get snow where I'm at, you know. In fact, we don't have ice or snow. We, we have some cold snaps once in a while, but we don't, you know, that's about it. The last cold snap lasted for about, I guess, two or three days. We didn't get any snow. Uh, there was no ice, and it was like, you know, uh, don't send a blower, okay? So I told them no. And that kind of upsets them a little bit, so then they don't send you anything, you know, yeah, you know, like, I'm just kind of hoping, you know, send me some innovative new tools so I can show the viewers some of the cool stuff that's out there. And I guess about two weeks later, another company got on, for some reason got the same idea, contacted me and wanted to send me some product and uh, to review, and I was like, I, I knew the company, so it was like, well, we've had, you know, worked with them before, so yeah, absolutely, you know, what do you want to send? a uh, de-icing machine for your porches and your driveway. So I see where this is going. Uh, again, you know, I'm in Southern Texas. Uh, no, don't bother, you know. I, I can't demonstrate that stuff because we don't have that here. So uh, there's no way I can do a review or even test it. So, 
and they get upset over that stuff. Yeah, it's too bad. They don't like that word no, I guess, but uh, whatever. Anyways, uh, links. I'll provide a uh, description below. I'll provide a link for where you can find the Tarantula Pro right now. Uh, it's on sale for like 179 but you may want to change those cooling fans at some point, which is what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> It seems like it's a really good machine. It's a real shame that there is some uh, problems, but I find every printer comes in seems to have uh, strength and weakness involved sort of thing. So, you, you know, it's, it's like you just, you deal with it. And sometimes uh, there's some great groups and followers out there on Facebook, stuff like that, where they, they give you links to where you can, you know, make upgrades to the machines to upgrade them to do better jobs than what they've been doing. Uh, somebody the other day, uh, unfortunately, compared the Hornet the artillery hornet which i have to the uh tarantula and between the two of them they're both great machines for the price but the tarantula has a bigger uh, build plate area which sometimes can make the difference between yes i can print it and no i can't make it so i've sort of leaned towards the tarantula pro for that side of it that it, it does have the bigger build plate uh between the two machines uh the auxiliary uh, Hornet seems like it's a really good machine too. I'll see if I can find a link on that one. I can't promise anything because it's it's been here for a while. I don't even remember how it got in the door here. It might have come from uh, one of the sites like Made the Best or something like that. I'm really not sure who, who sent that over to us now. It's been a while. Uh, the uh, other thing I'll supply a link to is these new stainless steel uh, nozzles. But if you do get them, please in the comments below or something, let me know how you're making out with them or if you found that they're, you know, wow, you know, like better, you know, like uh, I'm going to try them and I'm going to try them with some different materials, PLA, PLA plus, uh, PET G. I might even get adventurous and try some uh, ABS or ASA plastics and stuff and just see how those um, stainless steel nozzles hold up. The uh, problem with the King Rune, which is what I'd like to be putting them on, is that darn nylon tube in there. So that's, you know, that's going to be a problem because you're, you're looking at heat ranges that are close to melting nylon. Like I said, uh, one thing, if you do decide to look for a printer, if you can find one with an all metal hot end, <laughs> that would be the way to go. Which brings about a question, you know, if anybody knows in the comments below, name your machine that you know of that, sh that comes in with an all metal hot end so that there's no nylon tube in there, you know, let me know, you know. <laughs> I'm wondering about Bamboo Labs P1P. Um, I'm not sure about their hot end, what the specs are on that one. It'd be an interesting uh, situation to find out because they are very fast machines. They're terrific, but yeah, I just I just don't know uh, if their hot end is any better or worse than any of these other machines right now. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the notice bell. We do give stuff away uh, week to week. Uh, not always every Thursday, but we do try to give stuff away. Should have another big prize coming up, I guess. Uh, maybe Thursday we'll, we'll put something together for that. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to get out of here and just say thanks for watching. And hey, guys, I'll uh, see you Thursday. Over and out.